I guess it was inevitable, but since everyone else is throwing in on the Elite Dangerous database shutdown, I figure it would not hurt to add my own perspective. The Elite Dangerous database, or EDDB for short, represents a significant but not essential part of the Elite Dangerous third-party ecosystem. It was one of the first major data aggregator tools, and was responsible for inspiring or otherwise encouraging the creation of more tools in the years that followed. This process has, thankfully, meant that EDDB is no longer the mission-critical element that it used to be, and I believe is part of the reason why its creator feels that the tool can be shut down in the way that it has been. While I had a user account open on EDDB, I have found in the last few years that Inara has become my preferred tool for trade route and module search information. While not as specialized as EDDB, it offers more functionality and integration with a wide variety of other software that makes it very useful and an excellent redundant tool that players should have confidence in. Inara is likely to take the top spot for the ED user base going forward, a feat that it has earned. Unfortunately, Inara is also likely to be the last major fallback point for third-party tools. ED StarMap and Spanch are top contenders, but emphasize exploration over other considerations. This is good because Inara is fairly weak on exploration support and planning, but remains a top tool for casual players that prefer to remain close to the bubble. Those of you who still main Elite Dangerous as your primary video game of choice are not about to get lost searching for some abstract module, though you may need to change the selection of tools that you leverage. I have a few tutorials that cover basics on how to use Inara, and can add more if there is enough interest from my viewers. Let me know in the comments if this is the case, and also let me know what parts of Inara you might be interested in learning about. The loss of EDDB is a strong negative indicator for the health of this game's community, but is not its death knell. However, this loss does place more stress on the remaining battery of tools within Elite Dangerous, none of which have any redundancy left to speak of. From here on out, losing more of these tools likely means a direct and lasting impact on the quality and time efficiency of future gameplay. While there have been efforts on the part of Frontier to improve in-game tools and systems, these improvements have been inadequate. Much of this effort has been driven by a flawed interpretation of player motivation, which has historically placed too much effort and weight on individual players to manually seek out and discover trade routes, outfitting stock, and mining commodities. The current ecosystem of third-party tools emerged directly to circumvent this mechanic, in a way providing direct feedback to the developers about things that the player base has never liked about the game. That extremely intelligent and strongly motivated individuals were willing to write, implement, and then deploy websites supported by complex databasing and data aggregation tools is a testament to just how committed the community has been and just how inadequate some aspects of Elite Dangerous's design have remained. This level of commitment by the community has never been sustainable, and has appeared to be taken for granted by Frontier Developments for several years. It took a coordinated boycott of Elite Dangerous by its own third-party community in order to get the level of API access in-game that we currently have and which has enabled the more recent and much more advanced features available to players through these tools. The recent restructuring of Frontier, resulting in David Braben's placement in the founder role, as well as the shuffling around of various middle and higher level management affiliated with the game itself, has shown some positive signs of improvement which are, ultimately, insufficient to overcome the large amounts of negative baggage which the game has accrued over the years. The recently delayed unknown feature overhaul has only added additional negative momentum to this pile, and has served to significantly demoralize much of the game's current player base, myself included. That we still do not know which feature is being overhauled, or what vision that Frontier has for Elite, 
or for that matter, any information about plans for the game extending beyond the next few weeks, makes it hard to develop and maintain any amount of enthusiasm about what this product could look like a year from now. The launch of Odyssey was the last time I amassed any respectable amount of optimism for the future of the game, and while I still plan to continue playing Elite Dangerous, I do not anticipate any significant movement of this product for the remainder of this year, and for much of the next. I have learned to accept this game for what it is, and to take regular breaks in order to play other, more active titles on the market in different genres of the industry, or to go outside and enjoy the burgeoning spring and early summer while the weather is nice. I do not think that Elite Dangerous is going to die. As a product, I anticipate it being available for years going forward, though I also do not expect that this title will produce any significant innovations or expansions without a massive infusion of capital and manpower. This is a theoretical possibility, but not a likely one. I expect that the Thargoid storyline will continue as planned, and that we will receive smaller optimization updates, as well as this mystery feature expected to land sometimes towards the middle or end of next year. It might make for a refreshing experience, or it might not. Either way, Elite Dangerous has, and likely will remain, my go-to chill-out title, at least until Star Citizen becomes more developed, though that still leaves a few years for things to change. That's all I have for today, so I'll catch you all later.